in 2002, the American National Science Magazine published a photo titled The Harvest by Mr. Li Wenma of China. Once again, the terrace of China's Yunnan Ailao Mountain showed itself to the world. Spring or summer, autumn or winter, morning or evening, sunny or foggy, the field in Ailao Mountain is charming all the same. While we are marveling at the exuberance of nature and the great creation of humankind, we can't help asking, by whom, when, and how had these terraced fields been constructed on these lofty and precipitous peaks? Let me tell you, it is the honey. The Hani inhabits mainly within the Hani or Yin Autonomous Prefecture in Hongke region of Yunnan Province, China. With a population of 1.2 million, it is a populous nationality among the minorities in China. Hani has their own spoken language, but no written language. It has a long history and continues to maintain its lifestyle and cultural traditions. <laughs> Terraced fields of the Hani ascend from the river valley up to the mountaintop, and they can have hundreds of terraces. Unlike the object of photographers, the terraced fields are a farming project, the life dependence, and a way of survival for the Hani people. As proverb has it, the whole year's work depends on a good start in spring. March is the time to plow. Hani people pay particular attention to the rice seedling transplanting. They will hold a seedling open gate ceremony before the transplanting begins. So we kai yang men jiu shi ba xiao yang wan da tian li yi zai de shi hou so ju xin de yi ge qi dao feng shou de yi shi. Na me zhi you zhu ji zhe zai 第一款要在的秧田上,面对东方念念有词的在下三株秧以后,身着身专的哈尼的妇女们,成功开始紧张的采场活动。The seedling open gate is presided by the official of the village. First, he will choose a paddy field near the village, and then the ceremony will be hosted together with the owner of the paddy field. The hostess speaks, man, crop, and fortune while putting three sheaves of hay into the field. Hay is used to pray for another harvest. Then she will place the boiled white eggs, red painted eggs, and cooked rice into small bowls respectively. These foods are prepared for the people, the gods, and the paddy fields too. The honey people hold that the paddy fields work arduously to provide humans with food every year. And since they are the dependents of the humans, they should be offered food too. Both white eggs and red painted eggs are prepared for the households that will transplant the seedlings. Those who have funerals or weddings take the white eggs home, while the others take the red painted ones. 
After that, each family can decide the time to start their seedling transplanting. In the ceremony, a chicken and a duck will be brought to the paddy field, but they will not be killed. Instead, only some feathers will be plucked. Honey people regard the chicken as the daughter of the rain and the duck the water. They are there to keep an eye on the water. Rain is okay, but no hail. Water currents are okay, but no floods. It belongs to the same house. The remaining cooked rice is left to the chicken and duck. Then the official packs up the things and leads people to the larger field. It belongs to the same household. And the same process repeated. The hostess plants three seedlings while speaking man, crop, and fortune. It means the three things are taking root in this field now. According to the honey people's custom, the sauna horn can be played from now on to the harvest. Now this family can play their sauna horn as the rest of the households will. After the ceremony, the seedling gate of the village is opened, and the villagers can start transplanting the seedlings, terrace after terrace, in their own field. The Hani people call the seedling transplanting daughter marrying. The seedling is the bride, and the terraced field the bridegroom. Thus, when the transplanting begins, the woman will dress themselves up and the man will go to add the fun. They will sing love songs while working. It's said only by this way can the seedling grow up quickly and the harvest is guaranteed. <laughs> It is an anthropopathy, the relationship between the honey people and the seedling and the terraced field. The human and nature are in complete harmony here. It was formed in the long history development of the honey people and shows their devotion to the field and realization to nature. Tilly, <laughs> Ballads like this can be heard in every village of Ilo Mountain. Xiaohezhu is the great Bema in Dongpu village of Yunyang County, who is also the renowned local ballad singer. Bema is the one in charge of the religious rite and the witch doctor in the Hani villages. Bema, such as Zhao He Zhu, are regarded as the intellectuals.
They are the inheritor of their ethnic culture. Hanin has no written language of its own. Its history is passed down by the Bema in each village. By teaching the ballad to his sons or disciples, the Bema passes their history to the next generation. Their ballads have various contents and format, but most are about the following contents. The origin of the Hani people their migration, and their final settlement in Ilo Mountain. The last two parts are of great historical value. When a young man died, he would have to go to the village. So he would have to sing the Chianxi Shi Shi. We did the Chianxi Shi Shi from the old age. But when a young man died, his soul, the Hani Ballad is actually a dead march, and it is sung only when the old man in the village passes away. This Hani migration epic is about the migration of the Hani ancestors. It tells how they migrated from Hunina, the border region of Tibet Qinghai Plateau on northwest China, to Ailo Mountain in southwest China. The Hani Museum in Gokau Village in Yunyang County holds things such as a canoe, a bow and arrow. The canoe was their ferry tool, while the bow and arrow were used in war. Hani once was a stock breeding nationality in northwest China, but due to war or natural disaster, they began to migrate to the south. The Hani migration epic also tells that after their last war in Yunnan, the Hani people walked on to the south till they chose Ilo Mountain as their final settlement. According to the historians, Hani ancestors settled down in the Ilo area about 1,000 years ago. They adapted well to the humid and rainy weather of the mountainous area. Thus, they started the lengthy project to construct a terraced field on the mountain slopes.
Though the terraced fields in Ilo Mountain and Hongha River region have more than a thousand years of history, they are scarcely recorded. Thus, we can only find traces of records in the limited sources. The county history of Jianshui County of Hongha Prefecture recorded a headman called Zhuaneng, who led the people to construct terraced fields and was ordained Tusi for his outstanding achievement. Tusi is the ruler of a minority area who had full power in his precinct and his position can be passed down to the next generation. It is a policy of ancient Chinese government for the minority area. Poet Cheng Da Fan of South Song Dynasty once traveled around southwest China in the 12th century AD. When he arrived in the Ailao area, he recorded this, Look up to the slopes and ravines. There are terraces of fields ascending to the top of the mountain and are called terraced field. The poet was attracted by the scenery and made an agricultural record subconsciously. Thanks to his record, the Hani people's paddy field in Ailao got its name terraced field in this first time. At that time, when Hani people dug ditches or constructed fields and found huge stones in their way, they'd burn the stone hot and pour cold water on it to make the stone explode. As there are abundant springs in the mountain, they conducted water to the field while constructing the terraced field, thus their fields are usually parallel to the water ditch. However, almost everybody who has seen the Hani's terraced field will be full of awe. Ancient Chinese agriculturalists once regarded it as one of the seven field forms in China. As the living environment changed, the Hani changed from a nomadic tribe to a complete farming nationality. Their living utilities changed accordingly from whips and saddles to paddy boats and wine brewing pots and their cultures change too. They will hold sacrifices to the water, and the fish becomes both their food and decorations. Even their ballad regards that the Hani people, heaven, and earth are all produced from fish. The whip, which was once used in sheep herding, was lost in their migrations without any records of it. While Hani people built tens of thousands hectares of terraced fields with their diligence and wisdom, they also formed a unique management system for it. These aged men are talking about the water dividing stone in the village as it was there for a long time. It's hard to say how old it was. Grandpa Chao Gui Lu in Guangfu village believes that it can trace back to 45 generations. As the Hani people live on the terraced field, water is key to them. The villagers chose a dedicated water manager to control it. The water manager must strictly control the water usage. 
and he uses a scaled wood section for measurement. The wood stick was divided into one square cow, two square cows, and three square cows proportionately. Jin Bao Zhang is elected as the water manager in Baohua village for three straight years. He is strict and just in water allocation. He was paid in proportion to the water distribution and crop yield. Whenever one square cow of water is allocated, he will be paid with 3% of the yield of that irrigated field. This game rule has existed for so long a time that no one can specify it. Forestry is also under serious protection there. Hufa Li is the oldest forest protector in Baohua village. He will make a special warning plate for Haning village to warn people not to cut trees in the waterhead. Large villages will have more than two forest protectors and they must patrol the forest each day, wind or rain. Such strict rules guarantee the sustainable development of honey people. That's just what it is. The human created the history, and vice versa, was molded by the history. The Hani people constructed the terraced field. Then, the terraced field shaped their society and culture all the same. Hani people gave up the robe of the herdsmen and put on the clothes suitable for framing. They arranged their work and life by the growth period of the paddy and even their social relations are organized by the demand of the farming. Fusha 
相互帮助。Mali is an ancient Hani village. Today, a traditional Amatu festival will be carried out there. The drummer beats the gong to urge every household to make dinner. The long street feast begins at the main street. Migo and Mobi, the organizers, sat upright at the first table while the villagers put their dishes on the table. Each family must prepare at least 12 dishes before they can get out of their home. First, the housewives will present dishes to Migu's table, and Migu's assistants will keep some as a token. They will also give some back to Migu's table. This process symbolizes the offering to the guardian of the village, and Migu is the very mouthpiece of the guardian in festivals, and the guardian just sits beside Migu. Finally, at Migu's indication, the feast begins. Yet women under 50 will not be allowed to join the feast, even though they had toiled all day. We have been here for three years. Three years in the year, every year is a small festival. 一份呢，我们还能做主要是祭火神，封住火神以后，然后让火神弟弟的住在一个地方，不让他发生火灾。那二一份呢？二一份我们就是祭炸神，阿玛图。三一份是开阳门，六一的库扎扎节，七一有个年鬼节，就是把扎子里边的那些瘟疫撵出去。那个大八一份也是祭梯田神，也是跟这个农民大作文化有关系的。那个简一份是祭苍神，祭古苍的苍神。还有那个八一还有一个家庭的祭祀，叫做吃西米饭、尝西节。那个到了十一以后，我们就过那个十一年。Through these traditional festivals, the Hani people perceive again the colony and their place and function in the colony. Thus, the mutual help relation is further cemented. It's hard to give a precise description of the relation between Hani people, terraced field, and nature, but it is justified to say that the key to know Hani people and their culture is the relationship between the Hani people and their terraced fields. In southwest China, there is a nationality called Hani, which lives harmoniously with nature for thousands of years. To the outsider, their life is poetic, while to themselves, life is still calm and common. <laughs> 